Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is the game. Jeremy McWilliams, remember the name. What's up, guys? Welcome to the video. In today's video, I'm gonna do something that I'm gonna do something that I actually talked about in the last video. If you guys watched it, it was called Five Ways to Make Money During the Coronavirus Quarantine. It actually ended up being like seven ways or maybe a little bit more, but that's beside the point. One of the ways to make extra income that I talked about in that video by doing things like completing surveys or in this case, a website that I've used in the past called usertesting.com. So today, right now, I'm gonna take you guys through a live test on usertesting.com. You guys can see my screen. You'll see the whole process. I just did the screener test, which if you're not familiar with user testing, you have to do screener tests. Usually it's just like one or two questions that basically either qualify you or exclude you from that specific test. And as you guys can see right now, this was the screener question for this specific test. It's pretty short and simple and it definitely applies to me because I personally do a lot of photo editing and graphic design work. So it definitely seems like I would be an ideal candidate for this test. With that said, let's go ahead and view it and find out. Now, first things first, before I go ahead and get started with the test, I gotta plug in my microphone because one of the requirements to actually do these tests is you have to voice your feedback via a microphone. So whoever's putting out these tests, the company that hires user testing to get feedback from real consumers or real people like me and you, obviously if they're paying user testing to find testing candidates, ideally they're hoping to get real legit feedback that can help them with their product, service, app, website, company, whatever. So now that we're all plugged in and ready to go and turned on, all right. Let's get started. Here we go. As I just talked about, it says right here, all responses recorded. Our tests are first come, first served. So the sooner you respond, the better your chances. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Action required. Our team has seen an increase in audio issues recently. Please test your mic by making a recording and listening to it from this website. We suggest checking your microphone frequently to ensure you can hear yourself clearly. I use this microphone all the time. I just use it in a video, so I'm pretty confident that everything is all good. Not quite sure where the test is, though. Where'd you go, Mr. Test? Where did you go? Did you disappear? Man, I thought this was gonna be quick and simple. The first screener I tried only had one question. I qualified, I felt really good about it, and then I get my camera gear set up, and then boom, pulled a Houdini and disappeared. Oh wait, I think I just saw the test that I actually already qualified for. It just magically appeared on page two. Here we go. We are in the prototyping stage of an accounting app. In this app, the user will be able to add new users and assign them permissions. We are thinking about how to solve this process to make it as simple as possible. This is one of the ideas we had. Users and roles are created by being separated. Once a role is created, it can be assigned to a new user. There are roles that are predefined and cannot be modified and others that are customized. The following sketch shows a little of the process. This is just a concept. That's why it has no colors. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not seeing any sketch. And this one doesn't seem like it has anything at all to do with photo editing or graphic design. So I'm not really sure why there's not a screener test for it, but I took a couple of accounting classes in college. So let's give it a whirl. You can't score if you don't shoot. And by that, I mean, you can't make some cheddar cheese doing some user testing if you don't try a test. So even though honestly, I'm probably not the most qualified person in the world for this specific test, we're gonna give it a go. Cause like I said, I do know a little bit about accounting and I think I can probably figure out the rest. Let's find out. Before you begin, please install our recorder for Chrome. Once you install this Chrome extension, you'll be able to begin testing. Let's do this. You better not be giving me any spyware or malware or viruses. Wow, <laughs> solid reviews. 162, almost two stars out of five. Add extension. Apparently not too many people liked it, so we shall see. All right, Google Chrome would like access to the microphone. Let's do this. Start recording. Make sure your microphone is plugged in before you start the screen recorder or you will be forced to quit the test. Testing one, two, three. Can you guys hear me? Easier testing. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Just kidding, I don't think anyone's listening. But people do, once you submit the test, they do listen to your feedback. So that's why you need a microphone. So you kind of got to be careful with what you say during the specific test. Obviously, you don't want to badmouth the company or badmouth user testing or start dropping F-bombs or have your dog going crazy. 
like mine was just doing two seconds ago. So hopefully she takes a chill pill for the next 10 minutes or so. With that said, let's go. Click on this blue widget to open and close the test instructions. Use this when you want to see more of the website, give it a try. All right, next step. See what we got, nice job. You can also drag the widget to the corners of the page in case it's covering something. Cool, dragging, dragging, dragging. Keep that widget dragging. All right, next. I'm ready to speak out loud. Find a quiet place, hide windows that you don't want recorded. Say your thoughts out loud. Let's roll. User testing browser recorder wants to share the contents of your screen. Maybe okay. All right, cool, but what happened to the user testing? I don't know about you guys, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> what do you know? It was just hiding. All right, I think we are now good to go. Please proceed with test tasks. Leaving this window open, you may be directed to other websites later in the test. Alrighty, where are the test tasks hiding? I would love to proceed with the test tasks while leaving this window open, but I can't do that if there's no tasks that I can click on. Because, as you guys can see, you click the next arrow and absolutely nothing happens. One eternity later. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. All right, we're in the prototyping stage of an accounting app. In this app, the user will be able to add new users and assign them permissions. We're thinking about how to solve this process to make it as simple as possible. This is one of the ideas we had. Users and roles are created by being separated. Once a role is created, it can be assigned to a new user, okay? There are roles that are predefined and cannot be modified and others that are customized. The following sketch shows a little of the process. This is just a concept. That's why it has no colors. All right, let's try starting this again. There we go. Oh, I think we're getting somewhere. You will be shown an image. Once you see it, move on to the next step. Sounds good. Accounting app, users and roles proposal. Don't think I'm supposed to be looking at that. Next step. What do you think about this? You will be shown an image. Once you see it, move on to the next step. Is this the image that I'm supposed to be shown? Slightly confusing. Accounting app, users and roles proposal. All right, so press that button. The users and roles can be added. You can change the view between users and roles from these tabs. Some roles will be predefined and can only be cloned. So how you create a new user. So that's how you add a new role. That step is definitely confusing because it says you will be shown an image. Once you see it, move on to the next step. All I'm looking at right now is words, unless they consider this to be an image, but basically it looks like these are just screenshots of what the app or this particular website would look like. Uh, I'm gonna go with two, honestly, because it's extremely confusing. I don't think that's the accounting app's fault. I think it's more of how the question or step is worded, which doesn't really make too much sense. What do you think about this process? How would you improve usability? All right, so the app as a whole, let's see. It seemed pretty straightforward. Users and roles. Add a new user, pretty straightforward. You guys can see there's some examples right here. That's their status, their role. I guess they're all admins at the moment. That's just the default role, I'm assuming. Let's see. Users and roles. You can change the view between users and roles from these tabs. All right, so there you have the different roles, admin staff, hour tracking, restricted access, accounting app, adding a new user. Enter the basic data and organization's access for the new user. All right, you can choose whether active, inactive, Arya Stark, I like that name. This app must be a fan of Game of Thrones. So that's the username, or in this case, maybe their actual name, the email address, the password, their role, not just the commission. All right, so I'm actually very familiar with this because one particular website that I run, I do affiliate marketing. This is very similar to how I set up my affiliates and define their role. Pretty much very similar to this exact page right here. So everything looks pretty familiar to me, so we'll go to the next step. Please provide any final comments, questions, or suggestions you have before you stop recording and you continue to the follow-up questions. Ooh, <laughs> just notice the other example usernames. Robert Baratheon, Cersei Lannister, Jamie Lannister, Jon Snow, Sansa Stark, Rob Stark, definitely fans of Game of Thrones. So thumbs up for that. It's not really a question or suggestion, but it is a positive in my view. Nice little touch, I should say. As for the app, let me just go ahead and review it again real quick to make sure everything makes sense to me. Because like I said, I'm very familiar with a uh, app that's similar to this, or a website setup similar to this as well. Moments later. Honestly, it seems pretty straightforward. Doesn't seem very confusing at all. Comments as a whole, obviously I can't personally test it, but based on the screenshots and the pages that I'm looking at, it seems like a basic yet effective process. 
or app. And like I said, it's very similar to what I'm personally used to and what I've experienced with as far as affiliate marketing for my clothing brand. So it seems pretty straightforward. It seems like it should work pretty well. And at the moment, can't think of any suggestions or comments. So we'll go ahead and click on stop recording. Can you think of other ways to design this process? I'm sure, honestly, there's probably a ton of other ways you could use or many different things you could implement as far as a similar app or even this specific app to accomplish basically the exact same thing, which is just setting up roles for your users or employees, or like I said, in my case, affiliates. Everything seems pretty straightforward. I understand it, so I don't really see any other obvious ways that I would personally design the process. If I created from scratch, honestly, I think it would be something similar to this. So personally, in short, the answer is no, at least for me. Can you think of other ways to design this process? In all honesty, if I were to personally design a similar app and or functional website, I would design it in a very similar fashion. As a whole, this app slash concept seems very easy to use and pretty straightforward. Let's see, to make sure that makes sense. Can you think of other ways to design this process? In all honesty, if I were to personally design a similar app and or functional website, I would design it in a very similar fashion. As a whole, this app slash concept seems very easy to use and pretty straightforward. At the moment, I cannot think of other ways I would personally design this process. It's probably a much longer answer than they were expecting, but I'm trying to be as honest and thorough as possible in answering the question, because if I were the one, or if this were my business and I was paying usertesting.com to get real, honest, legit feedback from people that actually have experience in that specific field, I would really hope that they provide the most honest feedback possible, because obviously if people are lying or just giving really short, basic answers, that's not gonna help out your company too much. That's not gonna help out your product, your app, your website. So ideally you want to get as thorough and knowledgeable answers as possible. So that is what I'm trying to provide. Moving on to the next step, what could we improve? I feel like I just answered that one. I feel like I gotta give them something, but like I just explained to you guys and just explained in that my previous answer, everything's pretty straightforward. Maybe streamline the process a bit better. And by streamline, I mean automate it, but I'm still kind of confused if it's a website or an app. It says accounting app, but I'm not familiar with personally designing or creating apps, so I'm not exactly sure how those work, how the coding compares to website coding. So just based on these screenshots, everything looks super straightforward and easy. So I'll just be honest, I don't personally see anything that needs to be improved without being able to test the actual app and or website. Because like I said, even though it says app, I'm still kind of confused if it's just an app, a website and an app. I don't know. To me, it just looks like the back end of a website. All right, let me make sure this makes sense. What can we improve? I don't personally see anything that needs to be improved without being able to test the actual app and or website. Next step, how could you make it simpler? Is it just me or do all these questions seem almost the exact same in one way or another? They're all basic and they're all kind of beating around the bush, but they're getting at the exact same thing. I understand that you want feedback to help make a better app, but I feel like they just keep asking me the same question and I don't really have a different answer. So how would I make it simpler? I guess I'll type something similar. In all honesty, as a website designer myself, the back end process seems pretty simple, but perhaps it could be made simpler if the whole process could somehow be a bit more streamlined. No, automated, we automated. In all honesty, as a website designer myself, the backend process seems pretty simple to use, but perhaps it could be made simpler if the whole process could somehow be a bit more automated. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, hopefully, I don't know. Like I said, I feel like I just keep answering the same question and I'm trying to provide the best feedback I can, but I feel like I'm just giving the same answer using different words. What did you like about this? Tell you what I didn't like is how it pulled a Houdini on me for the first 10 minutes and completely disappeared. That was super frustrating. But once the test finally did show up, the whole thing, as I keep saying, was pretty simple. Aside from that first question, which was a bit confusing because all it said was look at the image and something about one image, which when I think of image, like a lot of you guys, you're probably thinking about a picture, like a picture of my guy, Evan Langoria, sitting on the throne from Game of Thrones. Ironic, considering the names that they're using in this specific test from characters from Game of Thrones. Anywho though, what did you like about this? Once again, the question's a tad confusing. What did I like about the test or what do I like about the app? I'm assuming they're asking what I like about the app. I like that the app is straight 
forward and seems very easy to understand and use. Which, once again, for the thousandth time, I feel like I pretty much already provided the answer in one way or another. This is frustrating to me, probably more so than it is to whoever's gonna be reviewing this test because like I mentioned to you guys, morally, I wanna do the best I can to help this specific company with the best feedback I can possibly provide that will in some way or another help them improve their app or website or whatever this ends up being. So it's a bit frustrating because I feel like I'm not 100% understanding the questions or at least not in a way that can provide them the most value for whatever they are paying usertesting.com. But at the end of the day, all you can do is the best you can. So that's what I'm trying to do. So with that said, let's go ahead and wrap this up. What did you like about this? I like that the app slash website is straightforward and seems very easy to understand and use. Finish tests. Be interesting to see what my review is like for this one. Because once you complete a test... All right, all right, all right. Let's try this again. Take two or three or four or five. I don't know what take we're on. Because you guys probably noticed the angle of the camera changed. And that's because my camera right there, the battery just decided to die on me. So now I had to bust out my phone to go ahead and wrap up this video. Anyways, what I was saying is while the test is finishing uploading, which it just finished, as you guys can see right here, test uploaded, thank you for your time. Once you upload a test, this is what happens. You go to the top right here where it says completed tests and you see this is one I just completed, 420, 2020, 517 p.m. As of now, you guys can see it says not rated, but that will change like you saw this one. This was the first test I took on 11 24 of 2019 the payout was 10 bucks for each of these as you guys can see for the one i just took it says pending but for the first one it says paid ten dollars and then they give you the feedback they give you a star rating so for this specific test i got four out of five stars and then they also whoever reviews your test in this case it was a guy or a girl with the initials of cl they give you some pretty good honest feedback and this is what the feedback was for this specific test which like i said was my first test so i did have a little bit of difficulty apparently i missed a task number three which as i talked about in the last video where i was talking about five or more ways to make money during the coronavirus quarantine. When I took this test, I recorded myself taking it. I recorded the whole process. So I actually went back and watched it after I read this feedback. And I honestly don't recall seeing this task number three that I missed, but being completely honest, it has been quite a while since I went back and watched that video. So I may go back and watch it again, see uh, what task number three is that I did miss, because I'm definitely not calling this guy or girl a liar. I'm sure I did miss something. But like I said, it was my first time. It's all a learning experience. And as you guys saw in this video, it's still clearly a learning experience. But it is a real legit way to make a little bit of extra money. These specific tests pay $10. There are other tests that pay more. Like if you click on available tests, let's see, I believe the live conversation ones, let's see if we can find one right here, live conversation. All right, so you see, it says right here, this test is approximately 60 minutes long and will pay out $60. So depending on which specific test you take, some pay more than others. I saw another live conversation that said the payout was $30 and I'm assuming that one probably took around 30 minutes. But for the two tests I've done so far, if I didn't run into all those problems and if I wasn't recording it, the process would have been a lot quicker. And in general, it'd probably take right around 10 minutes. So you're getting paid about a dollar a minute, which, you know, depending on what you think your time's worth, some of you may think it's worth it. Some of you may think it's not, but it is an option, especially if you're struggling right now, if you're unemployed because of the coronavirus quarantine, or if you just want an extra way to make some extra moolah. So there you guys go. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about in this video or anything I did during that test, please drop them below. I'll do my best to get you an answer. Either way though, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope it helps some of you out. I hope some of you give it a try. As far as applying for user testing, obviously the first step is to go to usertesting.com. You make a profile, you go through their little application process. And I believe it's been a while since I first applied and got accepted, but I wanna say it took them right around a week or so to approve me so that I was able to finally take real tests. But obviously things may have changed since then, especially with the coronavirus stuff going on. 
I would assume sites like usertesting.com and similar ones probably have a higher influx of people interested in doing this stuff than usual because as I mentioned, a lot of people are just looking for any ways to make some extra income, or I should say any legit ways to make some extra income, this just being one of them. So like I said, if you have any questions about the actual tests or the application process, drop them below. I'll see what I can do to help you out. And that is a wrap. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your night. Stay sane, stay safe. I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, stay limitless. Take a shot, you've got everything you'll ever need. You fought, you're not gonna let